For those of you who don't know me, my name is Darren Wagner. I'm the founder and uh, head trader of Morpheus Trading Group. I am an author. I've written several books on ETF trading and have a new one coming out actually uh, beginning of next year. And uh, also uh, started recently a company uh, called Dragon Charts, which has a stock scanner for different markets around the world. And um, some of you probably know about that as well. Uh, so enough about me. We'll keep that really brief. Uh, the reason you're here tonight is actually to uh, attend a market analysis session. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the major indices, the technical state of the major indices, as well as uh, individual stocks that may be setting up for potential buy or short sale entry in the coming days. And uh, it's been really a crazy market. Uh, if you've been watching the market every day, the moves are uh, unreal. Uh, several percent up, several percent down. And of course, the big reason for that is it's very much a news driven environment right now. Uh, you know, big news today that the World Bank's going to step in and save Europe. Of course, resulted in a big gap up. But now, on a technical level, um, a lot of the indices have run into major resistance at their 50 day moving averages. And just last week, we were down nine days in a row. So it's a very volatile, very tricky market. So if you're attending tonight's webinar, I congratulate you uh, because I think it's going to uh, you're going to get a lot of good ideas that are really going to help you uh, to navigate this really tricky environment. And uh, it definitely is a tricky environment. It's not an environment you want to be heavily aggressive in on either side of the market. So we're going to give you some ideas. As always, the standard disclaimer applies. Um, these are not meant to be uh, specific stock picks or um, suggestions to buy or sell. We're not uh, registered brokers. But uh, we just share our two cents with you, uh, really objective, looking at uh, some chart patterns and showing, showing you what we see. Um, joining us this evening, we have two people, Ed Baylog and Rick Petticelli. Uh, those of you who are already subscribers to our newsletters, the Wagner Daily or the MTG Stock Sheet, uh, you already know uh, Ed and Rick. Uh, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed writes the, uh, a lot of the Wagner Daily every day, and uh, Rick writes the Stock Sheet. And uh, also every morning we have a live trading room for the first two hours of each trading day uh, in which uh, Ed runs the ETF trading room and Rick runs the stock trading room. So you um, probably uh, those of you who are subscribers already know who they are. Uh, we're going to start things off with Ed. Ed actually is uh, uh, we're very fortunate to have him on our team. Uh, he's actually uh, uh, been with us for many, many years and uh, he's. Um, got an uncanny knack to know what's happening on a geopolitical level, which uh, translates into actionable trades on a technical level as well. And uh, he comes to us, uh, he's got an uh, MBA from Notre Dame University in, in, in finance. You know, he applies that to what he does with us. And uh, But he's also a master of technical analysis, and he's also the co-author of my next book that's coming out as well. Uh, so without further ado, what I'm going to do is turn things over to Ed. Uh, again, Ed's uh, specialty and expertise is ETF. So Ed's going to be uh, taking a look at the broad market for you, showing you some patterns uh, that, we're, that we see setting up in the main stock market indexes. And then he's going to show you some specific ETFs. And then we'll turn things over to Rick. Uh, and uh, Rick is actually uh, also uh, focused on individual stocks. So he's going to show you some individual stocks that he likes as well. All right. Well, let's get started here. Um... To uh, comment to or expand on a little bit on what Darren was saying, uh, yeah, it's very challenging trading environment right now. Uh, the volatility is uh, has been enormous, uh, you know, for several months. And uh, but particularly since uh, the reversal move that occurred back on uh, on um, October the fourth, when we first uh, we got our first reversal off of the big uh, bear move that we had uh, that started in late July, right here. Really, since this point, it's been very tricky, uh, very tricky trading, uh, very difficult. Um, so there have been very few setups on either the long or short side of the market, and uh, uh, any any moves have been short-lived. Uh, you know, we're primarily we're swing traders, so it's it's been a, an exceedingly challenging environment uh, to uh, to try to extract profits from the market. And we frankly, we've been mostly out of the market recently. We haven't had a lot of activity or a lot of trades on just for that reason. So, you know, what have we seen here recently? Well, you know, we had this breakout move. Uh, you know, we consolidated above the 20, 50 period moving averages. 
we had a nice pennant going here a couple of weeks ago right here and uh, the action seemed to be tightening up uh, the, and that we might hold this level and then possibly you know break to new highs but then of course what happened is uh, the concerns in Europe grew we fell off you know, you know we fell pretty hard here for a, a five to seven day period now in the past two days we've basically taken back all this drop uh, within it within two or three days we're right back up to where we were now um, you know normally you would look at some of these charts and you would say all right well look, uh, might be a shorting opportunity we're coming into some resistance levels uh, you know if we draw a trend line here you know we're coming at, we're coming here we're coming up into resistance of the 200 period moving average um, you know we have these uh, we had a, a double top that we formed here and here over the, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, this might be a good a good time to consider getting short. However, there's a problem. The problem is that today's move was such a massive move. I mean, this wasn't just a little a little blip on the radar or you know some minor event. Uh, you're talking about something where volume spiked. This is the first day that we significantly cleared the 50 day volume moving average right here in green. It's the first time we cleared it significantly in like 20 sessions. And it was a, a massive gap up and just closing at the dead highs of the day. That's a powerful move, a move. That's an accumulation day. That's a day in which institutions, we know that because of the spike in volume, institutions have clearly jumped back into the market. And you don't want to get on the wrong side of uh, institutional players because they're going to win. Uh, all the time. If they decide they're going to buy, they're going to buy. Uh, further uh, uh, creating, you know, further power behind this move. And by the way, we're 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 primarily technical traders. We don't get involved in all kinds of fundamental stuff. We don't get involved in news and headlines and all that kind of nonsense. But there is one thing, one type, of what I call systemic news. There's news events or there's there's information that occurs in the market. That's uh, what I what I consider to be systemic. It isn't oh IBM's profits doubled, oh or, you know the happy happy joy joy let's just buy everything. To me that's just silliness. Um, who, you know who cares from day to day why the media labels the movement in the market? But there are there are events there are things that are systemic and that have an actual impact on a market. For instance, if a meteorite hit Los Angeles. It's not a news event. That's a systemic issue. The, you know, the probably the 30th largest economy in the world just got obliterated. That's that's a real event. That's something that you can't overlook. That's something that would, without question, have a massive impact on the world economy. Well, the same would hold true when central banks get together and decide to open up the liquidity doors in an attempt to save, uh, your, uh, you know, the the euro from collapse, the euro, European collapse. In the short run, you cannot fight. You you cannot uh, uh, contend or fight the moves by central banks when they decide to uh, open the, the liquidity gates. Uh, it's it's foolhardy. There's a saying on Wall Street: "Don't fight the Fed." Well, in this case, the Fed is the entire world banking system. To fight that would be foolhardy. So my my our opinion and what we actually ended up doing today, we did have a short uh, trade. That was on our watch list. As it never, it did not trigger today, but we removed it from the wa the watch list intraday. We decided that uh, we didn't want to uh, add any exposure to the short side of the market, simply because this was such a, a massive move. It involved institutional accumulation without question, and uh, it involves um, you know uh, centralized banks coming together to to inject liquidity into the system. So. It's it's uh, the point being is that irrespective of the fact that we're coming into resistance levels, I'm very very hesitant to consider getting short here, um, sim simply because it's hard to fight that kind of liquidity injection. Now, uh, what I will say is that ultimately I'm going to do what the chart says to do, but uh, we have a, a very um, strong set of parameters for which we will enter a trade. Um, on the short side, so you know we are coming into resistance here. If I'm going to short anything, so the, you know the way the way that I would I would approach this is uh, I, I would have to see uh, 
so, some type of if we can't we come into resistance level suppose the S&P came into the 200 period moving average the only way I would even entertain taking anything short would be if we get a per, what what I would consider to be a perfect setup where we we overcut this moving average we form a massive reversal candle uh, on a huge spike in volume we get some sideways deliberation for a few days and then we break uh, break the low of that reversal candle. We break, you know, a two or three day low of whatever that reversal candle was. Then and only then might I consider getting short. But uh, for the time being, um, un until um, until this uh, uh, this plays out with respect to uh, the, this liquidity injection, I think it's just very difficult to even to consider uh, to try to trade the market in, in any meaningful way. Um, one, two things that are, are very apparent right now as we do our scans is that there, there are no um, there are no quality long setups uh, stocks that are, have consolidated properly form quality bases that are breaking out to new highs they're far and few between so we don't have the, the type of um, the, the type of uh, technical setups that you would want to see in mass in order to be, uh, consider getting long at this point and the same holds true on the short side. We have what we have are these big V moves, and when you get this kind of volatility, these these uh, these type of moves. Hold on a second here. I'm going to draw this. When you get this kind of volatility, okay. There's no discussion, nothing. It's just okay. We're going to go to the highs. Okay, now we're going to come back down to these lows. Oh wait, two days later, oh, we're just going to go back up to the highs. There's no discussion here. That's just pure volatility, just back and f just chop back and forth, back and forth, and it's very difficult to trade. There's no there's no discernible trend. Um, our strategy relies on uh, uh, trading with the trend. There's uh, there's no uh, uh, quality setups. Uh, there's there's no uh, substantial number of quality setups. We're not seeing the kind of price action in the broad market that we would want to see. We're not seeing new leadership emerge, uh, new stocks, uh, a, a big group of new stocks rallying, breaking out to new highs from established bases, nothing of that nature. So when when you get these kind of conflicting signals, you're generally a, a, a ahead of the game by by just staying out of the way and let the trend evolve, let the let the patterns evolve, let the market come to you. I assure you that most people I talk to have been getting destroyed in this market over the past uh, several months, and I, you know, basically when you hear the saying over trading, well, it's it's conditions like this where when you feel compelled to trade, compelled to try to find um, a move, is is when you're going to get beat up. I mean, that's just the the nature of the beast. That's what we're facing right now. So, uh, a couple months ago, we were up 10 percent, and since then we've had probably about a three percent or so drawdown. And the reason uh, that you know we haven't gotten demolished like so many people have gotten demolished is we've just been staying clear of the market. We really haven't been trying to do much in this volatile, in this uh, volatile environment. So um, if you look across various indices, you just see the same pattern occurring over and over again. Um, one thing that is a little concerning is that you know the, the Comp X, the Nasdaq has been more the laggard recently. It let us out of this initial move back in October. It was it's what let us out, but since then it's uh, it's kind of taken a back seat to some degree. We'll it, you know we'll see if it catches up. But what's interesting is that it's the Dow that's really um, the Dow that's showing the most relative strength. I mean the Dow has now broken back above the 200 period moving average. Um, one thing I would want to comment to is. When you get into times like this, things are real choppy. There's no real discernible pattern on a daily chart. It's a smart thing typically to take a step back and look at a longer time frame. Something uh, in this case, we're looking at the weekly chart. You can see that really for over the past, what, uh, 10 years or so, we've been just kind of mired in a trading range um on the on the uh, nasdaq we've been sh we've been trading between you know, somewhere between 1100 and 2800 2900 for 10 years now 
So we know that um, we're, you know, you know, we're in this massive trading range. Now, my point to showing this is that obviously we have a, a key um, resistance level here. We have this more or less double top that we formed over this 10 year period. If we, if we break above this double top, if we get above this 20, you know, around this 2,900 mark, it's right about here, you know, right, right around 2,900 on the, uh, on the NASDAQ. If we get above this and see any substantial, any meaningful volume hit the market, uh, you really had, that's a real, a, to me, a very clear buy signal for the broad, for the broad market, um, for the NASDAQ, uh, I, I would be, I would be very hesitant to try to do anything on the short side of the NASDAQ if we get above this high. So we're going to be watching that mark very carefully, very closely and see what happens here over the next several weeks and months. If we can get above this, that's uh, that's a, a, a very bullish signal for the market. Once again, you want to see a spike in volume. I mean, if that occurs, you know, we're going to want to see a uh, you know, big volume spike well above the 50 period uh, volume moving average for this time frame, for the weekly time frame. So, um, you know, there's not as much to say on the technical side of things other than, you know, it, you look at charts, it's like there's there's no definitive uh, no definitive signs of, uh, you know, why you should be long or short the market. S certainly, I, we can talk to what, you know, what ETFs are showing the most relative strength. You know, we have retail, XRT, the RTH um, are showing good strength. But now we need these patterns to tighten up. They're so choppy. Uh, there's, you know, there's no base, no base been, that's been formed. It's just, uh, you know, a, a chop back and forth, up five, 10 days, down five, 10 days, up five, 10 days, down five, 10 days. So we're, you know, we're just mired in a trading range. Um, consumer staples, uh, you know, have, have, uh, have shown some resiliency. Um, and uh, pharmaceuticals have been, you know, pretty strong also. So, you know, these are uh, these are the uh, ETFs that if if we're going to start taking off here, uh, this market's going to take another leg up. These are the ETFs we have our eyes closely uh, on, uh, you know, just looking for the price action to tighten up some, get some consolidation, get some sideways movement, uh, you know, over a several week period and then look for a breakout higher. But right now, uh, trying to jump on any of these you're just chasing the market now. I mean, we went straight down for 10 days and now we're straight up for five days or four days. So, you know, you're caught in a situation where you're just ch chasing the market with no legitimate trigger or lo no legitimate entry. So, you know, right now it just comes down to patience and, um, and, and waiting for setups to occur. I mean, that's all you can do. Uh, anything short of that, in my opinion, is just um, is suicidal in the current environment. So anyway, um, all right, well, that, you know, that more or less wraps up what I have to say this evening. I mean, I, I wish there was, there was uh, something that was more, um, more insightful or spectacular or here's the great setups today or here's how we're going to make a bunch of money tomorrow. But the, the reality is you've got to take with what the market gives you. And, uh, you know, right now we just, we just don't have the conditions that are, conducive to, to uh, you know, being heavily uh, invested in the market. So back to you, Darren. Turn things over to uh, Rick here in, in just a minute, but uh, just wanted to kind of follow up on Ed's uh, comments there. Uh, really good uh, information, and, and sometimes uh, a lot of our new subscribers uh, to, our, to our newsletters and our trading rooms, they, they have a tendency to think, if they're, especially if they're new to trading, that uh, you know the value in our services is actually in the actual stock picks we give. Okay, granted, uh, if you look on our website, our historical performance is an annualized return of 15% for the past nine years, and that's you know the cumulative performance blows away the S&P 500 by several hundred percent. But that's not really the point because where the value really lies is actually keeping our subscribers out of trouble when market conditions are bad. We have a proprietary market timing model that helps us do that. And uh, just got an email from a brand new uh, subscriber who's on his free trial a couple of days ago. And he said, well, I don't really see uh, the value because I'm not getting a lot of stock picks right now. And uh, I explained to him that the value is actually in 
just that. Uh, we, we keep you out of trouble. We know when the market conditions are not conducive to trading. And then when they are conducive, then, of course, we, we we're full bore. And that's how at the end of every year we're consistently outperforming the market. So it's, um, you know, most new traders learn that the hard way uh, through over trading and trying to be in catch every nook and cranny of the, of the market. So that's actually one of the uh, right now is actually one of the best times for people to be trying our services for that reason, because you can see uh, how our market timing model works and when we're in the market and when we're not. And, uh, you know, we're not here to entertain traders who just want to trade for the sake of trading. If you want to do that, go to Vegas. Um, you know, we're here to to help our, our, our clients profit over the long term and keep them out of trouble in uh, less than ideal conditions. So enough about that. I'm going to turn things over to uh, Rick right now. And Rick's actually going to give you some uh, analysis on individual stock picks. Ed talked more about the broad market and you know, what we see there and some uh, some some bigger picture right, bigger picture things. So Rick is going to show you some individual stocks that that he's got his eye on for potential buy or short sell entry uh, in the coming days. Of course, uh, depending on what uh, on what the market does. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the desktop over to Rick. Good evening, everyone. Um, just quickly review what um, what we've been going what's been going on in the newsletter the past few months. Basically, we had a buy signal in the market around. Uh, 10 18 and this is when our, our um, we went fully long around this area and as you can see there was some follow through but not much and and that pretty much came through in our setups as as our buy setups uh, maybe went two or three days higher and then just kind of petered out so what happens is then that you just basically are, are forced into cash at some point in time which is what happened when the market started putting in heavy volume distribution dates, and you can see there were probably like uh, four or five of them, and then they started to mount up here on 11:16 and 11:17. And actually, on this day right here was the where we stopped out of our remaining positions, and we we're out of the market by the by midday. So we pretty much avoided the the sharp sell off here, you know, the six percent sell off that was right after. So our market timing model seemed to work pretty good here the past the past few weeks, especially in allowing us to avoid this this steep sell off here. And uh, we only gave back about one and one and a half percent over the past two months, which I think is doing a pretty good job. Uh, when market conditions are are this choppy and, and nothing follows through, there's really nothing you can do but just protect yourself and your capital. So as of right now, we have. We're oper we have a sell signal in place. We weren't looking to get back into the market on the long side until today's action, as Ed mentioned, was a bit of a game changer for us. So with uh, today's strong um, thrust 50 MA, we're going to have to take a look at long setups now. And, um, and you know, I scanned prior to coming on this evening, and there's not a lot out there right now. Um, there's stocks that have broken out already. That we possibly could, that we couldn't have, have have bought beforehand because we were on a sell signal, so there was no, you know, you can't really complain about things that you shouldn't have had. We shouldn't have had any of these stocks, so we're not going to complain about missing these things. But when stocks break out, it's not the, you know, we don't really miss anything half the time because they're more. Some of the better setups will will come back and and, and pull back three or five days after breaking out, so you'll have a a few pullback entries. So. For an example here, MDVN Medivation. There's a tight consolidation here, and it just uh, probed above the uh, $43 level of past states. You know, we have no buy signal in place right now, so we're holding off on all buy entries. But if we see further confirmation in the form of accumulation days in the broad market averages, we'll um, we'll be on the lookout for MDVN on a pullback. You know, a two to five day pullback possibly into an uptrend like you know, drop like that or like this maybe might see a pullback into this uptrend line that might even coincide with the 10 day moving average we only have the 20 day ema up right here but that that would that that's the setup that we might be looking at next week uh same can be said for q core just building a strong base here and recently broke out of the base um ideally we'd like to see this this breakout Breakout fail here and come back down to the 20th of May. 
And if that happens, great. If it doesn't and it pulls away, we might be looking at the pullback entry in the next week or two. Um, Star Surgical, STAA, is a really good, built a really strong base here. Pretty much ignored the market sell-off. And, and as you can see here, it's broken out on pretty heavy volume. And uh, what we'd like to see here is the price action form uh, tighten up again and form a, a tight range in the 950 to 10 area here. Chop around for a few weeks. And um, next up is Panera. Panera just broke out too. It's another strong setup here. Panera just broke out to new highs from a gap up. And um, volume's pretty good. Nice pickup. So the first pullback possible to this 139, 140 area is a potential buy entry for us. But we'll see. We'll have to see what the price action looks like on the pullback. We're not just going to buy at that level. Um, as for potential breakouts in the coming, in the next week or two, ISRG has been building a pretty strong base here. Um, recently, it undercut the prior swing low. So it's a bit of a shakeout action here. Nice uh, volume on the move up here again. So it needs probably a few weeks sideways here. Ma just broke out to new high, but on the gap up, this is not this is not something we buy because it's just too much risk here on the gap up. But if it were to go sideways here for a few weeks, that would be uh, a potential setup. But this has actually got a lot more work to do. It needs to base out a little bit more because it's just straight up off the lows here in three sessions. So what else we have here? We have a TRLG. Looking good. TRLG held above the 50 while the market sold off and just broke the downtrend line and also needs to go sideways for a few weeks. As you can see here, the basing pattern, there's not much that is actionable. We need a, another week or two to produce solid setups. Fine, because we're going to need another week or two at least to confirm that we're in a, we're in a potential bull market here. Um, yesterday, uh, today's action was great, but, you know, we need to see a, a little bit more in the form of of uh, accumulation and more setting more setups need to uh, step up too. Uh, we don't have enough setups here. I mean, we have about 10 of them right here. None of them are viable right now. Um, here's RGR, which put in a long cup. You can call this a handle, but it's a little bit sloppy. So if this tightens up for a few weeks around $32, it could be a potential buy entry. And I have a few IPOs here that I'm keeping an eye on. Um, FIO, Fusion, EO, where this is a potential, uh, uh, this is the basing action is a little bit wide here, so we're going to need a few weeks to tighten up here, but this has great potential. It's an IPO, so you know, those tend to rip once they get over their initial surge here, and that's what it's done. So if it can base out above 35 for the next few weeks, four to six weeks. It could be a great setup. I just mentioned that so you could put that on your watch list and and uh, keep an eye on it over the next few weeks. Stamp, here's another IPO. This can, no, sorry, I got that mixed up. That's not an IPO, but here's another stock that's really performed well the past few months. And uh, we'd like to see a, a four to seven week base form here because it's basically doubled since the base breakout in July. And whenever a stock doubles in price, you really don't want to be fooling around with any kind of buy entries until four to seven weeks have passed because that's just what it needs to base out again. And you need time for this uh, volume to, to see how the volume really spiked at these levels here at 32. You need time for the volume to quiet back down again and settle into a trading range. And here was the other IPO that we're looking at, GNC Holdings. It's really not viable right now. It's just kind of just wedging higher. This is pretty much the wedge right here. But if it can go sideways over the next uh, four to six weeks, is a potential. So I'm basically showing you guys some relative strength here. The, you know, these are relative strength setups. They're way above prior highs or the 50-day moving average. It's really tough for me to, to sit here and give you actionable setups today. There's just nothing out there. You know, so I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, I don't have an ace in the hole somewhere. It's just not, there's nothing out there. So, so the good is that the broad market is perked up here on an explosive day today. Um, the bad, we don't really have any bad. It's just that we don't have enough confirmation yet. So we're going to just sit tight and wait for new patterns to emerge over the next week or two. And 
that means we're going to lay low. And uh, if this market isn't able to fall through on this uh, reversal here today or the past few days, then we could be uh, we could just maintain our sell signal and look for short setups uh, in another week or two. But for now, we really want to avoid the short side and just focus on potential setups. And that's all I have there. Just momentarily, we're going to open up for Q and A. Uh, if any of you have any questions, um, or if there's any anything you'd like to ask us about our strategy, or uh, even any charts you'd like to take a look at, we'd be happy to do so uh, until we until our time is up. But uh, Allow me just to take a, uh, a brief minute here uh, for those of you who are new to our services and tell you about um, how you can find out more about us. Uh, what you're looking at right here is actually the homepage of our company, MorpheusTrading.com. And uh, for those of you who have not yet, within the past year, had a free trial to our newsletters, our, our premium newsletters, as well as our uh, live trading room, which is included, uh, I recommend you do so. Just go, uh, just go to our homepage and click on free one month trial. This button right here, and you'll get uh, this little box here. And you can click on any of these arrows to get more information about each of the three newsletters we have. And then just check the box here for which newsletter you'd like to try out. And then just hit this button, click here to start free trial. And there's actually no um, credit card required, so it's uh, simply a, simply a matter of just filling out that little box there is all you all you need to do. Um, and uh, for those of you who've actually already had your free trial, uh, if you've already had a free trial and you'd like to um, see our rates for our normal services, you can just click on services here on uh, this tab on the menu here, and you'll see the prices for our three different newsletters. Uh, most of our clients go with the Diamond membership because you get a 60% discount actually on uh, on all three of our services if you sign up for the year. But you can check that out if, you, if you've already had a free trial. Uh, last, uh, I just wanted to also show you dragoncharts.com. It's uh, another one of my companies, which I started uh, in, it's a Hong Kong based company. I started it uh, about a year and a half ago. And this actually has a stock sc uh, screener for uh, not only the US market, but many global markets, specifically in Asia, uh, where uh, you can screen stocks automatically, very quickly and instantly over the web without downloading anything using the technical patterns that we teach our clients uh, in, in our actual trading strategy. It's uh, nothing else like it in the market because it's tied to our actual trading strategy. And if you've already been using our trading strategy, then the stock screener will be uh, the perfect supplement to enable you to find the types of stocks that we like. Um, so if you, um, if you want to check that out, we also have a free trial. Just go to dragoncharts.com and fill out this sign up now box uh, and you'll get a free trial. Again, no credit card required to test it out. Okay, so enough about that. Uh, let's go ahead and open up for Q&A. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit of time here. We're going to wrap up uh, at 10 o'clock, so 10 o'clock Eastern time. So we've got about 15, 20 minutes for questions. We'll, order, we'll answer them in the order they're received. Okay, Mike is asking, what are we looking for now as confirmation of the rally? Last time the market gained quite a bit before the confirmation. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, and that's sometimes what happens in a very volatile market is uh, the market already gains a lot before you get confirmation. But typically, what we look for is um, we look for one more. Um, we look for ideally a tight consolidation over the next three to four days, uh, and then uh, simply uh, a big a big up move on higher volume, another accumulation day to absorb some of the distribution days we've had. So you know we're not gonna. I mean, if the market goes higher, we're not going to wait till the major indices go back to their 52-week highs before we look to get long. Of course, that's that's silly. Um, but uh, basically, you know, if we get a tight consolidation and break out above, um, you know, basically uh, the highs, the form of the consolidation, that would be our, our buy signal. Uh, or if we get a pullback on light volume and then a bullish reversal candle, that would also uh, signify. So, you know, we'll, we'll probably be looking at uh, if the market is going to, um, you know, build on on this strength. Uh, it wouldn't be, you know, more than the next, you know, I would say not more than the next week or so where we'd see that confirmation. So we'll know soon. Paul, um, Dragon Charts, uh, Dragon Charts will run on any web browser that uh, lets you use Flash. So uh, it would not, unless you have a way to run Flash on your iPad, uh, it would not run on an iPad, but it would run on a Droid um, if you've got Flash installed. So it, it just simply runs on a web browser. Uh, any web browser with Flash, 
And actually, uh, in the coming days, not days, I should say, in the coming months, rather, uh, we're actually going to be changing our charts, uh, our charts from flash-based to uh, flash-based to HTML-based, uh, HTML5, actually, to be exact. And then, in that case, it will run on iPad. Uh, the actual stock scanner will and the screener will work without flash, um, so you can run it on an iPad, but you won't be able to look at the charts because the charts are flash-based. JNK chart. All right, let's take a look at that. Wow, this is a uh, <laughs> my opinion on this. It's uh, it's all over the place. I mean, uh, JNK, you can see here was in a was in a downtrend for for quite some time since uh, the better part of the year. Um, notice how perfectly this uh, this downtrend line I drew, the dotted the dashed red line, perfectly lines up with the 200-day moving average. Everybody see that? It's pretty interesting. You often uh, will see that the 200-day moving average, which is our yellow line here, often it'll line up with long-term uh, trend lines, just as you saw there, where you've got the uh, and this trend line lines up perfect. Anyway, um, as far as JNK goes, I mean it's a uh, it does have kind of an inverse head and shoulders pattern going here. It's the first thing that immediately grabs my attention. You've got the head here, left shoulder, and the right shoulder, uh, which uh, typically is actually a, a bullish pattern. It's a it's a bottoming pattern. So um, based on that pattern alone, I'd say um, the next move is more than likely going to be up uh, rather than down. But it's awfully uh, choppy. It's not in any kind of a trend right now. So perhaps one thing to do is, uh, you know, if you like this uh, chart, take a partial position, but I wouldn't really add to it until we get the confirmation to move out above the 200-day moving average. Roger's question is, can a small portfolio still succeed with our method? Uh, let's say a portfolio of $20,000. Roger, one thing that um, that separates us apart from our competition is actually two things that are related. One is we actually track the performance of every trade we make, and we report the results on our website. We've been doing that for nine, almost 10 years now. Um, so we don't just take, we don't just promote the winning trades and ignore the losing ones like, like a lot of companies do. Um, so you can see we're very real, very transparent, very credible. The second thing though, is that we actually have a model portfolio, uh, which we actually give the exact share size and the percentage of the portfolio so that you can, the model portfolio is $50,000, but if you have an account that's 20,000, you simply would take uh, 40% of the position size that we take. So if we're taking 500 shares in our $50,000 model account, okay, you would take 200 shares and therefore you'll be following the exact ratios that we have in our model account and uh, not only following the ratios, but we never go over our maximum buying power. So it's very realistic, replicable model. Uh, and um, nowadays with commissions so cheap at all the discount brokerage firms, uh, commission fees are not cost prohibitive even for a small account. So definitely it's all relative. Um, you know, a $20,000 account's not too small to, to follow our program uh, because you simply just scale the size according to our position size we take for each trade. And we have, by the way, we have included with your subscription, we have a live Q&A webinars uh, every Monday and Wednesday where our subscribers, our paid subscribers can actually ask us questions just like we're doing right now, but we do it twice a week and it's only for our subscribers. And it's every uh, every Monday and Wednesday afternoon, a little bit of a bonus, like sitting next to... I mean, we, we, we run money, too. We have a, a hedge fund, so we don't just teach this. We're, we're real traders, so you get the benefit of actually talking to us um, during the trading day. Sure thing, Roger. You're welcome. Oh, yes, yeah, Uh Yep, I just answered that question. We do. We do manage other people's money. We have a hedge fund, which is open t uh, only to uh, accredited investors. If you happen to be an accredited investor, you can send me an email, but uh, it's only open to uh, accredited investors. And uh, my email, by the way, uh, my personal email is darren2 at morpheustrading.com. And uh, you're welcome to email any of us, actually. Ed uh, is ed at morpheustrading.com. Ed was the first person who spoke about the broad market. And Rick, uh, who, spoke, who spoke about the individual stocks, is rick at morpheustrading.com. All right, great. Well, if you think of any other questions, again, there's our email addresses. You're more than welcome to email us and uh, again if you haven't done so uh, already um, I strongly encourage you to check out our, our services um, it's really invaluable right now in, in this uh, in this volatile market will keep you out of trouble uh, that I can assure you can't assure can't guarantee that will make you money but I can guarantee we'll keep you out of trouble um, again if you've not had a free trial you can you can do so 
Okay, what do we got here? Uh, I see some questions popping up. Leverage ETFs. Richard, we don't typically trade leverage ETFs. The reason is they, they do tend to underperform uh, the underlying index due to the fact that they reset uh, on a daily basis. Uh, they're derivatives of derivatives, basically. So whenever possible, we try to avoid the leveraged ETFs. We like to take the non-leveraged inverse version. Leveraged ETFs are best just for intraday trading. Chris is asking, can we elaborate how we would qualify this rally as being for real, what we look for in the next few days? I kind of already spoke yeah. about that. But uh, maybe, uh, Ed, maybe you would like to, uh, Ed or Rick, either of you want to jump okay. in so they can hear a different opinion because I already uh, shared my opinion about that. So... Ed, do you want yeah. to take this question? Sure. Okay. Yeah, ahead. Chris. Uh, good, yeah, Chris. A good question. What What we would want to see are a couple of things. One, um, you wouldn't want one, for, one thing we wouldn't want to see would be, for instance, tomorrow. Let's say if we had a massive distribution day in the market where the market was down two and a half, three percent across the board, and volume increased. So we would we would describe a distribution day as where you get more than about the three tenths percent drop in the market on increasing volume, but in 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 in, ca in the case of uh, this massive move that we just saw, we wouldn't want to see you know a volume increase on a down day uh, right away. You would you wouldn't want to see that. The next the next thing we would want to see would be another accumulation day, which we consider a confirmation day, where the market is up more than three tenths of a percent um, on higher volume day over day. So we need to get confirmation now, and that that would be the you know that would give us the buy signal. Uh, and you know, given today, given the um, the breadth and the strength of today's move, it you know it seems reasonably likely that we're going to get uh, that we should get a uh, an accumulation day, another accumulation day um, here you know soon. But um, um, you know, markets are either uh, strong markets, markets that are repairing themselves and looking to move higher. Uh, don't uh, don't don't give uh, distribution days on the heel, uh, right in the wake of or on the heels of a massive accumulation day. You don't you don't want to see a, you know several distribution days strung together uh, right right immediately following uh, a, a massive accumulation day. What we want to see is some sideways action, chopping around, vol volume lightens up, and then four, five, six days from now you get another big accumulation day and the market takes off again. Uh, that's pretty much the confirmation you need, and then the final part of the puzzle is um, we have to re we rely on the stock side of things, meaning looking at, at individual stocks. That you, you need to start to see stocks that have been consolidating near the highs. In other words, stocks that have not pulled back uh, when the market pulled back over the past 10 days, uh, when the market was selling off. You you want stocks that have been you know sitting at their 52-week highs. Uh, that they've been consolidating and that they begin to break out to new highs. Uh, ultimately, it's price action that determines everything. So if you don't, the final confirmation is price itself. If you don't get stocks that are strong breaking out to new highs after you get uh, a reversal day like we saw today and then an accumulation day of, of, um, of you know, a follow-up day to that, and then you know, finally, if you don't get the stock break into new highs, well, then you know you, you've got a problem. I mean, mostly, ultimately, if things aren't going higher, then the market's not going to go higher. So um, <clears throat> markets aren't going to rally very long without new leadership. Uh, you know, things staying in trading range, ranges uh, is, isn't what uh, takes a market to new highs. Sure, Chris, you're welcome. Thanks for coming, everybody, uh, this evening. And, uh, again, feel free to email us if you have any questions. Uh, we hope to see you... Uh, on a free trial or if you've already had a free trial love to have you back as a customer thanks for coming and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar uh, we'll have another one uh, next week so look for the announcement in your email